Hey guys, I'm just coming home from a service call. We changed out a heat exchanger this morning in an old Goodman gas pack and did a combustion analysis on that new heat exchanger and uh, the furnace that was the upstairs at the same residence. Everything went well, all done now. Just got a pizza, ate about a half of it, and I'm heading home now, heavy and ready to nap. But I wanted to have a short discussion about replacement refrigerants. And I'm not talking about R22, we're gonna talk about R410A. Now R410A has been a refrigerant, has been the primary refrigerant for the last five years or so. And it's been around for the last, oh, 20 years or so, I guess as far as mainstream. But eventually they're going to replace R410A. And I think uh, I think Steve Lab actually touched on this at some point, talking about there's two ways that they evaluate these things as far as the environment. There's the ozone depleting potential, and there's the global warming potential. And of course, to be concerned about that, you have to first believe that there's such a thing as global warming which there's a lot of debate about. But for the purpose of the discussion, we're gonna discuss how they evaluate it in those ways. Whether or not it's true or not, we can debate it at a different time. So we have ozone depleting potential and global warming potential. So, R22, the previous refrigerant, did have a ozone depleting potential. R410A does not. And none of the refrigerants we talk about henceforth will have any. Now, as far as global warming potential, they all have that. R410A's global warming potential is higher than R22. And again, I think Steve discussed this on his video. Interestingly enough, R407C has a lower global warming potential than both R22 and R410A. So if you're strictly talking about the environment, then R407C is better than both of them. But we're talking about the future. What, what'll be the next refrigerant? So we're gonna talk about R32. We all know and love R22, but rarely hear anything about R32. Well, R32 is another higher pressure or medium pressure. We'll call it medium pressure refrigerant because when we go into talking about CO2 as a refrigerant, it kind of takes off because you can have suction pressures of I think five or 600 PSI, and then a head pressure of almost 2,000 pounds per square inch, which is five or six times more than R410A, which we refer to as a higher pressure refrigerant. But R32 is similar in pressures to R410A. You actually need less R32 in the machine to perform the same function. But R32, it actually can be more uh, a productive refrigerant as far as the cooling process is very good, but there's one thing that is not good about R32. That is the discharge temperature is much higher than R410A. Why is this bad? When you have anything that's overheating, what you worry about is lubrication, the oil. What's gonna to happen to the oil? And at a certain temperature, you can have breakdowns in the oil and then imminent failure of your compressor. And that's the concern with R32. It has all these great features about efficiency, capacity. It's a similar pressure to R410A, but it has a problem with the discharge temperature. It's way higher than R410A. So the solution, and I've been reading on this from I want to say it was reading from Dan Foss, uh, Dan Foss's uh, publication, but I'm not sure. The solution is that you're going to inject a small amount of liquid from the condenser. You have your discharge going to your condenser, forming liquid refrigerant, R32, and then taking a small bit of that as, and taking it away from the amount of liquid going to the evaporator and bring it back to the compressor discharge to bring the temperature down. I don't know how well that's gonna work. I don't know if that's gonna work very well since you know, you're adding more components into a system. You're increasing the amount of piping. You're increasing the amount of failure because essentially if you add more controls, 
then you're going to have more issues, you're going to have more piping, you're going to have more chance for leaks, so is it worthwhile? You guys give me some discussion. Who, who among you have has heard of R32? What do you know about it? Will it be the next refrigerant that replaces R410A? It may be a long time. There may be another one. Like I said, there's CO2. And, I, and, I'm, and we're talking about global warming potential. Let's track, backtrack for a second. And we know that R22, it was something like, I mean, I'm going from memory, 1800 was the units. 2000 for 410A. So 410A is worse than R22. And then 407C was like 1700. So you go back down below R22. Now CO2, CO2 is one. So it's extremely low. It still has some effect, theoretically, but it's extremely low. R32, I think, was six or seven hundred. So it's much lower than the others. So is that the way that we're going to go? Because CO2, it seems impractical because of the high pressures. I mean, that's extremely high pressure. That's where, you know, I put that in the danger category. If you can imagine, uh, what are you going to have to have to transport liquid refrigerant running at 1800 PSI? What kind of piping are you going to use for that? Uh, that's a tough one right there. You're going to have some pretty hefty uh, gauges. I don't know if I'd want to screw my gauges onto a system. <laughs> With a 650 pound suction, <laughs> I might I, I, I might hesitate and cause a problem. But think about it, guys. R32, and I can't remember the number for CO2 right now, but you can look it up real quick. It's one of those you know long refrigerant names. YF127. You know, it's it's crazy. It's not that one, but it's like that one. There's a lot of stuff coming down the pike, and we just need to be aware of it. Even though we'd all like to go back in time and use R22 forever, or I would anyway. Because I like R22, the pressure is lower. It's just easier to do that sort of thing. But those times are over, I guess, and we can't go back. And all of our refrigerants now, I guess, are going to be higher in pressure. That's the only option we have. But at least we have 407C, which I really like because it runs at an R22 pressure, or similar pressure to R22, and does a great job heating and cooling. But tell me what you think, guys, and I will talk to you on the next one.